Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 16 Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Though I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made desolate all my company, and thou hast filled me with wrinkles which is a witness against me, and my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face. He teareth me in his wrath, who hateth me. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth, mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly, and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by my neck, and shaken me to pieces, and set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder, and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin, and defiled my horn in the dust. My face is foul with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death, not for any injustice in mine hands. Also my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. My friends scorn me, but mine eye poureth out tears unto God. O that one might plead for a man with God, as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Chapter 58 Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. 
Thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. A wonderful day and a restful night to you wherever you are. The Lord has been good. Each day reminds us of the promise of Jesus that he will come again and take us to live with him throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. I trust that you were blessed indeed today or last night or whenever and that as we focus on the word of God, may we do so with grateful hearts. We are focusing on Job chapter 16 and Isaiah chapter 58 as a background to what we will talk about this evening. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. Today's message is entitled, Love in Action. Love in Action. Let us pray, Father, please speak to us yet again through your word, for Christ's sake. Amen. Rubenstein, Rubenstein, the great musician, said, If I omit practice one day, I notice it. If two days, my friends notice it if three days the public notices it friend of mine we too must make it a practice of making our religion practical we must practice by the grace of god and with the right motive we must practice making our religion practical this is the message of james chapter 2 verse 14 to 18. James says in James 2 verse 14 to 18, he says, What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body? What use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. But someone may well say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. The problem in Isaiah 58 was that the people were guilty of trying to take care of their relationship with God, but not with their fellow human beings. They were ignoring their sins against their fellow men. God told the people in Isaiah chapter 58, reading from verse 2, He told them, Yet they seek me day by day, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that has done righteousness, and has not forsaken the ordinance of their God. They ask me for just decisions. They delight in the nearness of God. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. Why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard 
and drive hard all your workers. The problem was that hypocrisy had permeated the people's religious life. These hypocrites thought they make themselves acceptable to God by undergoing various forms of bodily affliction. Fasting, they believed, would atone for iniquity, but their darkened minds failed to realize that God is righteous and that he requires righteousness of his children. They forgot that the essence of true religion is the exercise of justice, mercy, and humility. Micah chapter 6 verse 8, Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. These hypocritical people fasted because they thought thereby to earn God's approval. They did not grasp the spiritual meaning of such things as fasting and Sabbath observance and thought that adherence to the forms of religion gave them license to gratify their own passions and to oppress the poor and the helpless. The forms or the acts of fasting were religiously followed, but the spirit of true fasting was missing. Rigorous practices, you know, served only to excite the nerves and irritate the temper. Fasting such as that ordained by God would have led to more vigorous and virtuous living. You see, friend of mine, true religion is practical. True religion is practical. To be sure, it involves the rites and ceremonies of the church, yes. But it is in the life lived before one's fellows that the presence or absence of true religion is manifested. It is how we live at home at school, at work, at play, especially at home. It is how we relate to the people who are closest to us that will manifest whether or not we know God. It is not so much a matter of abstaining from food as it is sharing food with the hungry. Practical godliness, friend of mine, is the only kind of religion recognized by God on the day of judgment. We say that again. Practical religion, practical godliness is the only kind of religion that will be recognized at the judgment bar of God according to Matthew chapter 25 verse 34 to 36. Without the practical aspect of our faith, our religion is incomplete and is not acceptable to God. Practical religion is exemplified in the story of the Good Samaritan. In Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37, and practical religion and practical religion is also exemplified in the life of Dorcas. In Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 41, friend of mine, practical religion is a blessing to the giver and the receiver. We say that again, practical religion reacts on the giver as well. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24 and 25 states, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. O friend of mine, practical religion is sincere, sacrificial, and follows the example of Jesus. We say that again. Practical religion is sincere, sacrificial, and follows the example of Jesus. It is not done for show. It is not done for show. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2 and 3 and 4 states, Jesus speaking says, Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. According to our passage for today, Practical religion involves 
avoiding the oppression of the weak, avoiding robbery of the widow and the orphans, and all forms of bribery, deceit, and injustice. Practical religion means sharing with the hungry, food and clothing and shelter. It means seeing that the outcasts and the homeless are cared for. It means comforting the afflicted and the depressed. Let us try to see how we can make our religion practical in these days. If you're heading to work and your workplace is next to a school and you see a poor family skipping school because they don't have money to take to send their children on the bus and they live right next door to you, why not volunteer to drop them to school? It's right next to where you work. Practical religion, you're standing in the line and you see a mother with four children can't pay for her items. You pay for it. Practical religion. If you have the extra money and God impresses, you pay for it. You see a sister or brother coming to church with the same clothing every Saturday. Instead of talking, go take some money out, out of the bank and send it to them secretly or buy some clothes and leave it for them secretly. And somebody will say, you know, somebody send this for you. They don't have to know you did it. Practical religion means paying the examination fee for that poor child to write GCE exams or CXE exams. Practical religion means buying a shoe for somebody who's going to school and the shoe tearing and they're trying to patch it up and you see it. Oh, friend of mine, God promises to bless us when we reveal his love in practical ways. Practical religion means you just get a sense that God is speaking to you. Take your car, go down by the grocery store, grab a box, buy a whole lot of food stuff, drive it to a house and say, God told me to give this to y'all. And when God impresses you to do something like that, you don't question it. Well, Lord, you know, the house looks good. They look like they are right. You know, you never know. Oh, friend of mine, God promises to bless us when we reveal his love in practical ways. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8 says, When we reveal God's love in practical ways, he says, As a result, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he, the Lord, shall say, Here I am. Perhaps, just maybe, perhaps, maybe, friend of mine, you are not getting the answer to your prayer because you're locked up in yourself. You want God to do for you, but you don't want to do for somebody else in a practical way. Oh, friend of mine, let us, by the grace of God, make our religious experience practical by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us live like Dorcas. Let us live like the Good Samaritan so that our lights will shine before men and God will be glorified through our Christian living. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Bless that person who put aside the time to hear it, Lord. And Father, we pray that someone who is receiving an impression from you at this time to do something good, something practical to express their religion, may they not doubt it, but respond accordingly. Remember those who have made prayer requests, Lord, bless each individual, answer each prayer, and grant us, dear Lord, a happy day and a restful night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.